Matt Makins here. Let's get into the December weather outlook. Can't start a new monthly outlook without verifying your last one. So my previous video monthly outlook was for November. Here was the temperature analog based forecast. Here's what actually happened. Placement was correct in warmth versus cold. The difference was the amplification of our pattern due to the Alaska Ridge. It was stronger than the analogs indicated. That meant trough year conditions for the West. That's why the cold was more expansive here. What about precipitation? By amplifying the pattern, the analog forecast, that precip needed to be shifted farther down to the south. Meanwhile, as you amplify the pattern, you take that drought even higher. We needed to take the drought numbers up into North Dakota, where it was quite dry in November. And you also need to lift that area of precipitation, lift it out of the Ohio Valley up to the upper Midwest. That's by amplifying the pattern because of that Alaska Ridge, or likely tied into the Alaska Ridge and the other causes that built that area. Remember, a ridge over Alaska brought them the warmth as well as amplifying the entire pattern across North America. In quick terms, December, colder than average to the west and across the north, warm down to the south. Precip-wise, that's how this looks. Let's take a look at the breakdown of how I came up with the analog forecast and how this compares to the modeling. And before we get too far into the weeds, I wanted to show you some really cool weather imagery. I made a short video uh, previously, but let's take a look at some of the cool weather stuff that's been happening here recently. In today's short, let's take a look at some really cool weather imagery. 100 mile an hour plus winds hit Colorado on Friday from Bill Line. He's a super superior satellite expert up in Fort Collins tweeted out this image. You can see the dust as a result of that wind blowing from Colorado into southwestern Kansas. That was really cool in the weather world. Other stuff that's notable, here is Hawaii. You know the volcanoes erupting. You can see that coloration here. These deeper kind of lime colors, that's sulfur dioxide. That's the ash cloud. As you look at a different mode of that same satellite picture, it senses heat. Look at that heat coming from those volcanoes in Hawaii. All right, here's the latest satellite picture. This is GO-17, so it's the one that's floating out over the west, looking at the western U.S., and quickly drawing in the weather pattern here. You can see kind of a split storm flow. Part of the storms are going up over Alaska, and some of that energy is diving down along the Rockies from Canada into the U.S. before spilling back to the north and east. What else is happening here? A bit of a split flow. So we are seeing some lows uh, developing in here and trying to impact the Pacific Northwest and Central western U.S. coast. What's also happening is we're drawing in some tropical moisture from the southwest. That is going to help out Colorado and the American West at times early in December. That moisture flow will. It'll improve snow conditions throughout the Rockies and hopefully we can send some of that down into New Mexico and Arizona which are not off to a very good snow start so far. Okay so that's looking at the western U.S. Let's pop over and look at the eastern U.S. So now we're go 16, and the storm flow here is primarily what we've already described. You got some of that moisture coming in from the southwestern U.S. It flows toward the mid-Atlantic. Not all that weird there. That's pretty well expected. Then you have the, the diving nature of the colder air coming out of central Canada, headed towards New England, and it's all getting wrapped up and sent way up toward Greenland. You can watch this cloud cover in here kind of curling like that. Well, what we're setting up here is kind of the blocking pattern that we will have in place for December. What do I mean by that? Well, we're still going to have Alaska over here. I'll just do it off into space, but we're still going to have a ridge here, amplified ridge near Alaska, and we're going to develop one here over Greenland. It's currently right over here, but it's going to drift toward Greenland if the modeling is accurate. And the analog years would be accurate in that case, too. Uh, what we're doing is we're still keeping kind of an amplified pattern. We're keeping the jet stream zigging and zagging a lot. And that's going to keep the weather unstable throughout much of December with high uncertainty. When you amplify the pattern, you're creating more pockets of energy. Uh, greater chances for cold air outbreaks, greater chances for precip. If the jet stream was just going something like that, then we'd pretty much have a predictable pattern where the Rockies facing west would do okay, east facing slopes of the Rockies would not, and then we'd bring out moisture into the mid-Atlantic region. But we're having an amplified pattern. 
as you look at three models. I'll show you three globals. We'll start off with the American version. And we're looking, instead of looking at the side of Earth with USA's perspective, kind of the main front there, we're going to be looking down. So we're above Santa Claus, looking down at the North Pole. Uh, we have the U.S. right in here. And then here's our Greenland blocking ridge as it develops for the month. What we're looking at is the average of the next month. Average of 30 days, where is our weather pattern? Where are those blocking features? And here's the other over the North Pacific and Alaska. Blue areas would be the tropiness, the cold weather. In GFS, you see a rather prominent area here. Another prominent area from Europe stretching close to the southeastern U.S. And also this trough that's going to be dominating from central Canada down to the south and west over California. In this setup, let's just assume that this is entirely accurate. These two high pressure areas, the strength of which will ebb and flow, one will be stronger than the other classically, throughout the course of the month. So let's say the Greenland one is strongest early on, and then the Alaskan one kicks back in and becomes the dominating feature. In either case, we're keeping an amplified pattern or the potential for active winter-type weather across the country. If you grab your teleconnection atlas, or it's a, it's a manual, it's an atlas that tells you when you have strong high pressure here over Alaska, you will have very strong low pressure areas or anomalously low pressure areas, low heights, I should say, from central Canada down over California. That same atlas will show you when you have strong high pressure over Greenland, you should bring in more troughing here to the southeastern U.S. So just looking at GFS here and the differences, this area matches up climatologically with what we'd expect. This area does not quite. Most modeling was a very dominating ridge over Greenland. Maybe you've heard of it. NaO negative is the Bella blocking pattern. And when you get that, you can extend this trough into the southeastern U.S. Why is that a big difference here on GFS? Ultimately, the strength of the two at play. But it also could be just modeling, not necessarily wanting to find the true climatology. When you hear about a negative NAO, or what we have here with Greenland being kind of blocked, that's when folks along the Atlantic coast start to talk about they're going to have winter. Bad winter storms are going to be possible. And that's usually because you bring this troughing in along the west coast. So that's a little bit of a difference here with GFS. Not that it's right, not that it's wrong. I'm just pointing out an observation of what is happening here on GFS that stands out in my mind as something questionable. Look somewhere else. Let's look at Euro. Same idea, average of 30 days, and you can see the similar pattern here. We're creating a blocking ridge, although lower amplified, that over Alaska, another close to Greenland, and you see the trough placement is different. This would more classically align with our teleconnection atlas of having low pressure or lower heights in these areas, therefore colder air. So just looking between the American output and the European outlook, we have a difference. If these models were to follow climatology precisely or a frequency analysis precisely, Euro has a better feel of what's going on. Let's bring in what Canada is doing. This is CanSips, it's their weekly product, similar to the last two, and it is quite similar to the GFS. But this makes a bit more sense than the GFS because this blocking ridge out by Alaska in the North Pacific is stronger. If this is stronger, you will have the troughing here across the western U.S. into central Canada. You will also, to balance things out, bring in high pressure across the southeast. This area here makes sense in our teleconnection atlas. This area also makes sense in that if the ridging over Greenland is not as dominating, then the troughing here is also not as dominating, so it may not reach the eastern U.S. In all three cases, we have a negative NAO. In all three cases, we do not have extreme winter weather for the eastern Atlantic. So, what are the differences here? Where are things going? Here, most recently, you've heard a lot about the Euro, because it was kind of the leader. It was the leader on developing a stronger ridge. 
it's no longer developing quite as strong a ridge here. GFS, you might have heard, was kind of the, the trailer, if you will. It was the weakest of the three with the pattern. It jumped on board with more of what the year was doing. And Canadian was always kind of uh, in the middle of the two. Over the last few days, GFS, Euro kind of aligned. So a lot of speculation, well, that must be the correct output. But then here this morning, I'm talking to you on Sunday, the Euro and the GFS are starting to come more in line with what the Canadian forecast was showing. Of the three, from a teleconnection basis, an analog basis as well, historic years that match the pattern, the Canadian is the most reasonable in my approximation based on everything that's been happening so far. So what does this mean for our weather going forward? Let's just use CMC, Canadian forecast. We've already had uh, December early temperatures uh, here in Alberta at minus 40. Oh, and by the way, that's minus 40 Celsius, but it's also minus 40 Fahrenheit. Some very cold temperatures here. Colder than average is shown in the blue and the green shades here. And that's the monthly average that you're looking at. So colder than normal conditions. As we look from Canada, where that troughing is, down through the western U.S., at times spilling out toward the Great Lakes, kind of the mid-Atlantic region up to New England. At the same time, we're not spreading the cold all the way down to Texas or Florida. We're also not exploring all that cold all the way into New England or the Maritimes. That's just generally looking at the temperature setup from that Canadian forecast as we look at the month. Let's look at precipitation. Kind of a same idea with our storm flow being amplified near Alaska. Storms diving down to the south doing something like this. Where are you going to find your moisture? Well, we're still going to find moisture up to the north in Alaska where the storms are originating. I shouldn't say originating, but where their path through North America originates. Coming down through the prairies, relatively dry, although there will be snowfall. As that storm flow dives south. It's hitting that blocking ridge, bringing moisture into the U.S. That's where we'll find our swath of moisture. Tennessee, Ohio valleys, potentially through the mid-Atlantic region. We'll also have an inflow of moisture coming into the Maritimes, far New England, up into eastern Canada. What about that subtropical kind of moisture that's been flowing in from the west? That will be there at times, too. And that's the beneficial water, the surplus we see in western Colorado. Parts of Idaho, the Great Basin, Utah, some of the mountain ranges here will do okay. The Sierras look rather wet, and that's having that favorable flow coming in off the uh, Pacific. I don't believe that flow lasts all winter, and if you join my winter forecast, you know that uh, overall it's going to be drier than average there. Let's flip over and look at snowfall. This is just a generalized look. To forecast a month of snowfall is sketchy at best, but this gets us a general idea of where our deeper snows will be. So previous map was precip surplus or precip deficit. And in total, that, that sometimes implies, or you may take away from that, it's not going to snow very much. But look, we're going to have a lot of snow here in eastern Canada. That's going to stay on the ground, valuable groundwater moisture when it begins to melt with warmer temperatures. We're also going to spread in snow for snowpack here across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, into New England. We'll have quite a bit of snowfall here for the American West, but it is focusing on the Rocky Mountain Ranges. And I spoke earlier and said we hope to get some snowfall here in Arizona and New Mexico. Those snow basins are not doing very well at all. And from a water standpoint for the Colorado River system, Lake Mead, other reservoirs, we need the snowpack here. We're catching some, but it's going to be a bit lackluster. That is kind of the model rundown for the month. Let's get back to the analog base forecast. Again, the history base forecast. I compare the weather patterns of the past to where we are now, and that's the forecast I'm about to show. So again, from a true just analog based forecast with less weight applied to models, looking back at a historical pattern, this is what you would find from the analogs. Cold across the north, warm across Texas into Florida, kind of a little bubble there. And as far as precipitation, we'd still find the drought numbers from Texas into the central plains, wetness out of the Tennessee, Ohio valleys, perhaps up into New England went along the central Rockies, off into the Rockies of Colorado, farther south than we had in November, and some wetness throughout parts of the Sierras. Again, that's 
purely analog based, even though this video did delve into some of the modeling. And as you saw, some of that modeling is pretty similar to what the analog gears are forecasting as well. Until the next monthly outlook, or the next video coming out this week addressing some of the short-term weather concerns, I'm Matt Makins. Thanks for joining me.